Hey, what's up, everybody? In this video, we'll dive into a method in reinforcement learning called Q-learning. We'll use the Q-learning method to train a taxi to pick up and drop off a passenger. I've prepared this Google Colab file, which you can get for free. Stick around because at the end of this video, we'll also push our trained model to the Hugging Face Model Hub, the most popular platform to share your machine learning models. So let's get started. To kick things off, we first need to make sure we're using a GPU and Python 3. After that, we can connect to a runtime. Once we're connected, we'll start by installing the essential libraries. This involves both Python packages and a few system libraries. Once the libraries are installed, I will just clear the output so you can see better. Now the libraries are installed, it's crucial to restart the runtime of the notebook. This just ensures the newly installed libraries are ready to go. With that done, we'll import our libraries and fire up a virtual display, which will operate in the background. This will come in handy when we record a video. That's all for our basic setup. Let's move on to the environment setup using the Gymnasium library. The Gymnasium library is an awesome reinforcement learning library that has a lot of pre-built environments. In our case today, we're going to use the Taxi v3 environment. So just initializing it with the gym.make and specify the name of our environment and uh, the render mode will set to RGB array. But before we dive deeper, let's unpack the concept of states and actions in reinforcement learning. State is a complete description of the state of the world. And action is the action our agent can take in a given state. So what does the states and the actions look like in our taxi environment? Let's take a look. Well, we have a 5 by 5 grid with four potential drop-off locations and five possible passenger locations. Of course, this includes the scenario where the passenger is in the taxi. So a quick math, five times five times four times five gives us 500 unique states. How about actions? Our taxi can move up, down, left, right, pick up or drop off a passenger. So we can see we have six possible actions. With our environment ready, our next step is to initialize our queue table. But first, we need to understand what is a queue table. Think of the queue table as our taxi's memory. Each cell in the queue table corresponds to a state action pair value. In queue learning, we're training a queue function, which we'll use to update the queue table's value every time an action is taken by our agent. After each update, agent will take the action according to the freshly updated queue table. When the training completes, we will get an optimal queue function, which means we have an optimal queue table. Ultimately, it means we have an optimal policy since we know the best action to take at each state. I hope that gives you some basic ideas about queue learning without sounding too technical. Now, with that background knowledge, let's initialize our queue table. We'll define a simple function here. Just call it initialize queue table with the number of states and the number of actions. Then we just start off with zero values for all of the cells. Under here, we'll run our function immediately. We can also print out the queue table and take a look. It's a vector with shape of 506. Now let's move on to the exciting part, training. The most important thing we need to do is go like this video and subscribe right now. Seriously, it's completely free. You can always change your mind. After you did that, Let's define our training policies. Queue learning is an off policy method. It means that we're using different policies for training and taking actions. In our case, we're going to use a greedy policy for updating the queue function and the epsilon greedy policy for taking the action. Okay, let me explain. A greedy policy, just like its name, we always select the best next state action value to update our queue value. And for epsilon greedy policy, we will need to introduce a parameter called epsilon. 
what does this epsilon do? To understand that, we need to introduce a concept called the exploration and exploitation trade-off. In the context of learning algorithms, our taxi agent faces choices when it's taking an action. Should it try out new actions to learn more about the environment, which is exploration, or should it stick to what it already knows and maximize its rewards, which means exploitation? Epsilon is like a dial that controls how adventurous our agent is. It's a number between zero and one. If Epsilon is close to one, that means the agent is very adventurous. It will like to try out new actions, even though it might not be the best short term. And low epsilon means the agent is cautious and stick to what it knows. In many cases, we start with the high epsilon, so the agent explores a lot in the beginning. And as time goes on, we reduce the epsilon and make our agent rely more on its past experiences. With this concept in mind, let's first define our greedy policy. It's pretty straightforward. We will always take the action with the highest state action value. And then let's define our epsilon greedy policy. For this function, we will take the Q table state and epsilon. We first generate a random number between 0 and 1. If this random number is larger than epsilon, we will exploit. Otherwise, we will explore. All right. Next part, we need to define all of our hyperparameters, such as training episodes, learning rate. For evaluation, uh, we need to define the number of evaluation episodes, evaluation seed. And for the environment, we need to specify the name of the environment, the maximum steps we are planning to train, and the discount rate. Lastly, we want to define our epsilon values and the decay rate for the epsilon values. Now it's time for the training function. We'll take in the number of training episodes, epsilon values, the decay rate, environment, and maximum steps, and the Q table. We first define a for loop for each episode. We need to reduce the epsilon value because we want to explore less and less and exploit more and more. And then we reset the environment and the step count. After that, inside of each episode, we want to update our Q table after every step the agent takes. So we have another loop for each step. We will choose the action using the epsilon greedy policy. Then we take the action to update our state. We'll then get a new state, reward, if it's stopped or some other general information. After this step, we can now update our Q table. For each cell in our Q table, we update it using the following function. I'll just flash the math equation up here at the screen. I don't want to bore you, so let's not get into it in this video. For now, we can just implement it in our code like this. And if the game is terminated or truncated, we will break out of the loop. Then we set the state to the new state. Lastly, we return our Q table. Now with our training function in place, let's start by training our taxi agent. Maybe, maybe for only five episodes for now. And it actually trains pretty fast. As we can see, the Q table didn't change much, which means it probably won't behave very well. So let's generate a mo model card with all the relevant information about this model. But we want to see how our taxi is doing so far. So let's get a visualization. We'll use this function. It basically takes an image at each step and combine all of the images together to create a video. Just run the video generation and save it as replay.mp4. Now we can display the video on screen. OK, as we can see, if you want, you can also download the video from the folder. Let's take a look. All right. Obviously, with only five episodes of training, our taxi cannot do its job yet. It gets stuck pretty easily. So let's increase the training episodes. Maybe to 1,500. And run this training again. All right, we can see the array has, our Q table has updated. Let's run the visualization again, and let's take a look. OK. Great. 
Great, that's not bad. After 1500 episodes, our taxi can actually do its job. So far, we can tell visually how well our agent is doing, but how do we quantify the quality of our agent? We need to introduce a method to evaluate our agent. So to do that, we can just use the following function. What it does is that after playing all the episodes, it returns the average reward and the standard deviation. These two values gives an idea of how well the agent did on average and how consistent its performance was. So if we evaluate our agent, we'll get a score. And obviously our score will increase uh, if we increase the number of training episodes and tweak other hyperparameters. I hope now you can go play around with it. This is nice. So now let's push it to the Hugging Face model hub to share it with everyone. First, we need to import the libraries. We'll use this push to hub function, which is provided by the Hugging Face team. It will push the model, do an evaluation, add metadata, and also record a video. The source code is all available. If you're interested, you can take a look at how it works. For now, we will log in with our own access token. I'll go find my access token, copy this, and come back here to log in. Once we're logged in, we just need to define here the username and the repository name. Make sure you change this to your own username. Otherwise, you won't be able to use mine. So just run this. Once it completes, we can now come to our Hugging Face web account. And over here, we can see that we have successfully uploaded our model. Great. Also, if you want to load a model from another person, you can use the load from hub function from here and compare it with yours. And here you can change the ID name uh, for the model you want to load. And once you have that, you can see the evaluation score here. All right, I hope you find this video helpful. Make sure you like and subscribe. Until next time, happy training.